Welcome back everybody once again to Jack's Tech Corner. This is Photoshop Elements Weekly episode or show number 11. In this show, as I talked last week, we're going to talk a little bit about removing green screen uh, freehand. Now, what do I mean by that? Very simply, uh, we're going to do it without any tools. We're just going to do it with the editor uh, because, you know, a lot of us can't afford to spend the money and we're just not going to spend the money on uh, just anything if we can do it by hand. So I told you I would show you that and I will show you that today. Also, we're going to look at text over picture. Text over picture. And what does that mean exactly? What that means is um, having your text nicely cut out and having a picture behind as a backdrop. Uh, you've seen these in malls. You can uh, buy these. But hey, you can make it yourself a lot cheaper and it's easy to do. Next, I have a very exciting, uh, interesting piece of equipment for you that I'm going to introduce to you today. You may know about it already, or you may not. I've been playing with it for a while, but not using it every day. And um, we will talk about that and what that is. But I'll leave that to be a secret right now until we get to that point. Then at the very end of the show, we will have our contest for the live viewers here. We have a contest, and my wife watched the show last week and said that, you know... She said that was a mighty nice contest, but you got to give those folks a clue. So today, the contest will include a clue to kind of get you uh, homed in to the right answer. And I'm pretty sure you should be able to pick this one up. So let's go ahead and get started with Photoshop Elements Weekly, show number 11. Welcome back, everybody, once again to Jack's Tech Corner. This is Photoshop Elements Weekly, episode or show number 11. In this show, as I talked last week, we're going to talk a little bit about removing green screen uh, freehand. Now, what do I mean by that? Very simply, uh, we're going to do it without any tools. We're just going to do it with the editor uh, because, you know, a lot of us can't afford to spend the money and we're just not going to spend the money on uh, just anything if we can do it by hand. So I told you I would show you that and I will show you that today. Also, we're going to look at text over picture, text over picture. And what does that mean exactly? What that means is um, having your text nicely cut out and having a picture behind as a backdrop. Uh, you've seen these in malls. You can uh, buy these. But hey, you can make it yourself a lot cheaper and it's easy to do. Next, I have a very exciting, uh, interesting piece of equipment for you that I'm going to introduce to you today. You may know about it already or you may not. I've been playing with it for a while but not using it every day. And um, we will talk about that and what that is but I'll leave that to be a secret right now until we get to that point then at the very end of the show we will have our contest for the live viewers here we have a contest and my wife watched the show last week and said that you know she said that was a mighty nice contest but you got to give those folks a clue so today the contest will include a clue to kind of get you uh, homed in to the right answer and I'm pretty sure you should be able to pick this one up so let's go ahead and get started with Photoshop Elements Weekly, show number 11. Okay, guys. Well, welcome back, everybody. I'm glad to see everybody's uh, online here with me this morning. And we are going to get started. We're going to get started here right away with um, talking about the um, green screen and how to get rid of that background and folks you could probably use the same technique you can use the same technique when doing anything such as um, removing backgrounds as long as it's a solid color wall this this technique will work pretty well for you so I thought I would show you how to do that and once we do that then you can go ahead and call in um, good morning BW Woods morning uh, DIL 347. Kevin, I see you're in there. And Jessica, you're there. Uh, SKARPZ, good morning to you. Uh, it's nice to see everybody's checking in there with me this morning. Uh, it's, a, it's great to uh, have everybody on board here this Sunday morning. And like I said, we are going to get started here removing some green. Um, and I know, guys, I got to take more pictures. I know what you're talking about there. I do have to remove uh, or take some more pictures, that's for sure. But um, we are going to use this one of me again here. So. Let's go ahead and get started with this particular topic. Like I said, once the topic is over, then you can, you're free to call in on Skype. 
Uh, the Skype number will go away. When it goes away, hopefully we'll work this out. When the Skype number goes away, then don't call in. When it comes back up, by all means, give me a call and ask me your questions. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we go. We have a picture of me, um, and I told you I need to get more of these pictures. I, I understand what you're saying. But we're going to actually remove the green screen without any tools, just by what is in the actual um, photo itself, right? Or Photoshop elements. We don't want to use any tools at all for this. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, we have to select the green. Now it won't be a perfect selection because you know there's some wrinkles in here and you know um, there's a little coloration or lighting effects going on. You got some darks and some shadows. So we're going to do the best possible job that we can and then we'll worry about the rest of it. Uh, we'll clean it up a little bit after we get the bulk of it out of there. So first thing we are going to do is Right here, we are going to use the magic wand tool. Not a tool that I use a lot, but for this case, or for removing a solid wall or solid background color from your subject, it works very, very great. It's a good, good uh, tool to use. Just click on it and look at the tolerance up here. Usually the tolerance is set down pretty low. Now you can just move your mouse over the top of this and move your tolerance up and down to play with that. I find, at least for me, 60 works pretty well. 60 seems to be a good uh, good round number there and it works out good for me. So we are going to use 60. Hold on one second. Got another piece of equipment hooked up here for, for later in the show. I wanted to show you something, but uh, heard some static here in the background. I didn't know what that was, but I guess we're okay. So we have the audio going through here and we are going to just click on here. And you can see now, it does a pretty decent job in picking up all the green. All right. But there's going to be a phenomenon I'm going to tell you about here. Uh, something that happens with green screens or blue screens uh, that makes using tools um, a quicker, but um, not, uh, not too overbearing. Uh, Stiller's fan. Yes, I am. Uh, I guess you're picking up the shirt there, the Stiller shirt. Um, very good. Um, Sorry, I'm just watching the chat room and answering as you go along. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to start picking up this other green. And as you see, if we click on that, it's going to fill that in because it's darker here. You can see where that is darker. So if I click on that, it's also got that. Now, right around here, around the neck, you can do it there also. Or just use the, uh, the quick selection tool that I like to use a lot. And just go right over that and just get rid of that. Look around. The rest of it looks pretty good. So at this part, I want to make a new, uh, a basically a uh, duplicate layer. But what I want to do first, I don't want to make the mistake of doing this because it's going to cut me out. So let's do select and we're going to inverse. And you'll know what I mean by if, if you mess up um, because this won't work right. What's going to happen is you're going to cut yourself out. Now if we do a control J and duplicate that background, you can see that we now have a transparent layer, just like we have when we're using the green screen wizard that we used before. But the only difference is, and I'm going to show you this, hopefully this comes up okay to you guys uh, out there and you're viewing this. If I blow this up right here around my arm, you're going to see, we'll try to get this even more blown up you are going to see what is called spill. Now spill is just basically the light picking it up from my shirt and the light in the in the photograph is um, casting some green onto the white shirt. This also happens if you're doing wedding pictures of somebody in a bridal gown, right? You, it would be the same thing. So we have to get that green out of there. You can see also it's around my head so as you can see, it takes a little bit more time, but can it be done? Absolutely, it can be done. And you know, it can be done. I use this way a lot of times before I ever uh, thought of purchasing a tool for it to do more, but you can do it without having any tools. Now, all we have to do here is, this is interesting, right? 
click the paintbrush tool, click your foreground color, you're going to grab the closest thing. Now remember, when you take a picture, folks, there is different color variations because of the different casting of the light uh, when you're taking your picture, your photograph. And so when you're taking these samples going down this arm, take samples at different points because if you don't, you're going to have a discolorated or a discoloring uh, shot. So you don't want to do that. Pull this color picker over here. As you can see, it's the uh, little eyedropper. Just pick a color right here. Click OK. You got your paintbrush selected. Now check this out. We can just start painting. Oh man, what's happening? Can you see that on your on your uh, video? Wow, what is happening? Huh? Look what's happening here. Is when I'm painting. Look at that mess it's making. Let me blow that up for for you a little bit. Look at the mess it's making. It's all uh, not. It's all jaggedy and it's not straight with my shirt. Wow, how can I do that? I guess I can use a Wacom pad, right? Maybe. Nah, that probably won't do it either. So, I'm going to undo that brush tool. And we'll undo all of them go back. Go back some more. Alright, now we're back up there. Now, let me see here. I have to... Uh... Alright, let me blow that section back up again. Same section right here, okay? Okay, guys, now, this is the same section. Now, here is how we fix that. Because you don't want that to happen because your picture is going to be an absolute mess uh, with all that painting going on over it. Go to your transparent layer. Make sure your background layer is unchecked or, or, un, or invisible, I guess, because that little eye is a visibility eye, so uncheck it. Now this transparent layer right here, all we have to do is go down here. See where it says lock? Now if you can see that right there. And remember folks, I like to try to do this uh, so you can see it because me teaching you and you not seeing it is not going to do anything for us. You're going to leave this show thinking, wow, I can't come back next Sunday because Jack didn't show me a darn thing. Now we can see it. Now right here, there is a little lock right here and it's going to tell you lock transparent pixels now what that means is if it's going to lock the transparent pixels it means that nothing can be painted on the transparency wow that's a really really good tool let's click on that so now we lock the transparent pixels now let me change my screen region again um, I'm going to blow this back up for you guys to see this uh, like I said, I want you to follow along, so uh, give me the time I need to let you follow here. Now what we're going to do is we are going to paint with that same brush. I didn't change anything there. I'm actually going to show you this even more close up. Alright, now let's paint with the same brush tool. So once again, I'm going to pick my foreground color. I want to make sure I got the proper correct uh, coloring. There we go. And then I'm going to pick my brush tool. And now I'm just going to start painting over that. I can even make this brush tool a little bigger, a little smaller. I don't suggest to make it too big because you will paint over the shirt. You're trying to go over the green and transparency is where you're trying to go. That's where you want it to be, folks. Right on the green and the transparency. When you get so far down, like I said, click on the foreground color again. And pick up another color don't be afraid to sample 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 because the coloring changes because of the lighting effects now you can see we're not painting on that actual uh, transparency in the background we are just painting on the shirt and the background there basically just the edge of the shirt is all you're trying to go over there and you will remove the spill this way Try to slow slide down here a little bit. You can see I got all my skin right there. No problem. Just make sure you pick up another color here. Use your color picker and pick up here. All right. Then just go right over the edge of that right over the edge of the skin and the transparency. Um move that over a little bit there. I see you didn't see that. So I went right here over the skin 
and the transparency is where I went right there okay all right now you can see it's not really really that hard to do this it is a little bit time consuming um, a little bit more than using the tools but you know what like I said folks I did this a lot before and you get pretty good at it um, we're just kind of playing around here and viewing this together but you get really really good at it and uh, it doesn't take long at all to start uh, once you sample and then you just go over the skin and get rid of the green uh, you can see they're high messed up a little bit because of the different color once again I select and I just get rid of it here all right then once we go view and we go fit the screen we can now fit it on the screen and everything looks good you can see it's a little bit down here uh, once again you can use that tool up here the um, magic wand tool and you can select that and uh, clean clean it up a little bit but clean it up a little bit there just to this one you might be better off just use this tool and then just delete that little part out of there so so that is it that is very much how we are able to clean our pictures up and make them so they're nice and clean uh, using a green screen or like I said um, you can also use just a solid color wall I've, I've used that very successfully and uh, it's good to uh, be able to uh, have that technique down and good morning to you, uh, M I Melinden, M L I N D E N. Good morning. Um, it's good to see you there. And uh, welcome to the show. I'm glad to have you aboard. Okay, guys, so now's a great time uh, to actually call in if you have any questions. Kevin, thanks, that. That was a, a good lesson. I appreciate that, buddy. Um, like I said, if anybody would like to call in, now's a good time uh, to give us a call here. And the next lesson is a little bit more involved. It's going to be text over picture. Um, those can also be found, um, and I don't normally uh, promote uh, the any of my uh, my products here, but they, this next uh, one can be found on my DVD. <coughs> uh, some of you folks may have seen it, but I put a twist on it today. And made it more difficult um, so it's going to be more interesting and I hope I don't mess it up um, I got so many emails last week said Jack you know your live shows are really great but um wow man you, you messed up you had to look for a picture or, so it makes it live that's what makes it interesting to me it's it's a live show um, and having everybody all you folks uh, joining in makes it even better uh, what do you mean by call you can call me. You can pick up your cell phone. I don't know if you're in overseas and you're in Ireland, uh, if it's a long-distance call. Uh, if you use Skype, it would be free. Skype, you can just load up Skype on your computer. That's S-K-Y-P-E. It's a free download. It's a free account. And all you got to do is put my name in there, Jack's Tech Corner, and we can talk computer to computer. Uh, we can even talk, um, basically, the way I have it set up right now, I can't. You won't be able to see me except through the uh, video that we are currently doing here, the live stream. But the um, the other way you can call me, if you have just a cell phone, I bought a number from Skype, a phone number. You can just call 724-701-0911 from any household phone or cell phone. Um, you can definitely give me a call that way also. So if you'd like to call in. I also got an email one. Uh, I like that. Uh, okay, B.W. Woods, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I'm glad that uh, that worked out for you. I once got an email too. It said, Jack, don't drink coffee during the show. Um, but hey, I watched uh, a show here in, in the States called Regis and Kelly, and they sit and they, they talk in the morning and they, and they drink a lot of coffee, so... Be that what that may be. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, I got you on Skype. Okay, very good. All right. 
anyway that you can hit call and you can actually make a call on Skype is what I'm talking about not just uh, text chatting as you're uh, texting there so that might be what you're talking about okay well let's go on there we don't want to uh, stumble around here too much because that last part this last part of the show before the contest is going to be interesting um, because uh, basically um, uh, I'm going to be doing some moving around and I'll, t I'll fill you in more about that here in just a little bit so but I think it's gonna be very interesting I tested everything this morning I think we're gonna be in good shape so we are going to move on with the next part of the program okay very good we are now going to start with the text over picture and I've done this before text over picture um, I've done this uh, on YouTube I think there's one but I made quite a bit of a uh, a twist today so uh, the twist today is going to make it more enhanced and make it more interesting for you I know it did for me when I was playing around I thought well um, how can I do this so we are going to go ahead and get started so the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and create a new file in our Photoshop Elements. So go to File, and we are going to go to New, and then we're creating a blank file. Now on this blank file, we are going to, I'm going to call this Text Over. You can call it basically give that name whatever you want to name it. it doesn't really matter the main part of this picture that you want to do is the bottom here where it says background contents normally it's set on background color as a default um, and I don't know if you can see that or not see I get tired having you guys not see this stuff because it's really important that you know what I'm talking about really really important there you know uh, I know I don't like going to a class and sitting and saying, oh, I couldn't see a thing. Now nah, we know what we're talking about. Okay, here's what we go. So, we are going here. And normally it's set on background color, but you want to make sure it's set on transparent. Because this text is going to be transparent, we need the transparent pixels for this to work properly. So we are going to use transparent. Now what we are going to do is click OK. Let me drag this back out. Just to give you more of a view of this. Okay, so now we're ready to put in our text. And here is our text. Let's see here. Text. Now I'm using the stencil standard. You can see right here. You want any one of this text, any text that has is more, <clears throat> I guess, rounded or fat or, or heavy, um, heavy pencil-like, I guess you can call it. Um, and you'll understand that in just a minute. So if you click here for your text, and we're going to type out text. Now I have this set at 100 points. You can make it bigger. One thing to remember when you're working with text that a lot of people don't know. When you click on this pull down menu and the max is 72, you may want to change that up here. Take out whatever's in there, take it out, and type in what you want. I'll say 125. Even though 125 is not in that font list, it will make that font bigger. A lot of people get hung up on that up there. Let's change the font color. We had a weird color we were working with. Let's just make it red so it's easier to see. And on here, since those are actually Christmas pictures, I was going to do like a Christmas type theme. Now this will work with any theme. All right. Click the uh, little check box there. Click the move tool. We're going to move that over. All right. there we go okay so we have the word Christmas up there and that's ready to go now the next thing we have to do is we have to bring bring in a picture that we want to use with that word to be behind it so we are going to go to this first one that I have set up right here 
what you're going to do now is do a selection we're going to select all we will do a edit just like this edit copy go back to your text over right here that's what we named it text over then we will go up to edit and we're going to paste Uh, I'll paste right here. Okay. All right. Now. <laughs> Just trying to pop out in the chat room too. Hey, uh, some you know spelling does matter when you're doing tutorials. You know you gotta make it look right. Uh, go back to one of my YouTube ones. There's there's a bad spelling on there, a misspelled word, and I still been here about today. I pulled up there two years ago. So, but anyway, we have that now set up. We have the picture, and we have our text. Here's our text. Here is our picture. What we want to do now is very simply click on the picture and group it using your command G or your control G and you're going to group it to the text that puts the text on top of the picture this is an interesting uh, phenomenon here how this works or interesting skill because what's happening is we normally put the text on top of the picture but now that it's grouped behind it it is just there behind it you can move it if you click the move tool and you're selected on that layer one we can move this around to get the faces where we, where we need them to be because I noticed earlier that the faces are not where they should be. I also noticed that this is not big enough. So if I click here, I can, without pulling it down, you can make the text a little bigger just by pulling it around. Not changing the font size now, just basically changing the text itself to fit over the people where you want it to be. Just like that. Now that part, for that part, that is what I had on the basic tutorial. What I'm going to do now is we are going to introduce you to a second part of this that I thought was pretty cool. So we shall see if this will work out for me now. Here's another picture I want to introduce into that same group of pictures. So what we're going to do is do select all edit we're gonna copy and let's go back to our text over and we're gonna do edit paste this time it puts it in the wrong place this time pull it down below that text like this I know you got a bit of a mess here but that's our original that's fine that's what we wanted and here's our new one that's our new picture what we want to do now is introduce new text so the new text is going to be very simply done the same way we are going to click on text click down here and we shall put the year in there there you go click the move tool and we're going to move that right to here make it a little bit bigger So we'll make that a little bit bigger. Click on here. Now you have to rearrange these two. Remember, the picture must be on top of the text. The picture's on top of the text. Do a control G. Turn it on. And now we have that underneath the, the 2010. So this way, this is the little twist, folks. This gives you two pictures, or you can use as many as you want um, on there that you can actually um, put together and um, put them all in there together and make it uh, very, very simple to use. If you click on here, you can actually move that underlying picture around just like we did before. And as you can see, I can barely get the three of them in there. Yeah, that's not too bad. I think we'll leave that. And then the last thing you want to do, you know, a lot of you know that I work a lot with um, with the uh, gradients. So the last thing we want to do is we want to click on new layer, 
pull that layer down here below everything else push this back up there control G it came out there let's uncheck that uh, let's go back here this is live video now remember All right, so if we add a new layer, we want to pull it all the way down to the bottom. There we go. Now we have it in the bottom. That's where we want it to be, down at the bottom. I don't know what that, how that layer, that's that other layer we just got in there. Let's take that out of there. We don't need it. That was one of those, I always been say in computers, that was the oops factor. It happens, you know, oops. Okay, so now... Um, Hey, great. Uh, great, Jessica. Glad that's going to help you out there. So, now what we want to do is, since I like the gradient tool, I'm just going to finish it off. Uh, I was looking for something Christmassy, and I thought, well, this looks like wrapping paper, kind of. Maybe not to everybody. I'll just come across here on my new layer and let it go. And there we go. Um, so, hey, the cheap way to learn. Thanks, buddy. I, uh, I, I appreciate you joining us here. Um, and, uh, actually my, my wife said last week, it was very interesting talking to you from Ireland. I, I think it is. I think you're from Ireland. Um, so, and Kevin, I'm glad I can teach you a new one because you are very vast in the skills of Photoshop. So that's a new one, but I tell you what, it's, it's a nice little trick. It makes a beautiful framed uh, picture there. You can hang it on the wall. And I call that a conversation piece is what I call that. People can come in and say, how in the heck did you make that thing? That's really beautiful. So that is it. Um, it's, it's nice. Uh, or if nothing, if you're, if you're doing it over a holiday, use that for next year's Christmas. You know, put it on a Christmas card for next year. So you can definitely do that also. Bring us back up here. In case you have any phone calls, now's the time to give me a ring or uh, call me on Skype. Um it's hard for me to watch the chat window on Skype here when I'm broadcasting, so I normally do not uh, watch the chat window on Skype. I do, however, watch the chat window for the channel, so uh, that's pretty nice to be able to watch that and to follow along with you guys and to keep on task. Uh, it's pretty important. So, let's go ahead <clears throat> with everybody checking in. Um, now it is about uh, about halfway through the program. And I do usually and ordinarily I run my uh, my quick little 58 second advertisement here. And I'll be right back um, with the new part of our show. And I think you'll be interested in it. I think it's going to be pretty good. Um, uh, great idea. How are we using my Christmas? Hey, great, Jessica. I'm glad, glad it's working out for you there. I'm, I'm glad that's going to help you out there uh, on your cards. And I'm glad I can show everybody in there a new trick. Um, that's why I wake up early in the morning getting ready for this show and think man what can I show these folks what can I teach them next uh, because you guys are so vast also in, in the art of uh, Photoshop and editing so you know it's hard to come up with new tricks for you guys all right let's go ahead and uh, blast through this uh, ad here uh, fill up your cup of coffee take a break and uh, I'll be back with you in 58 seconds green screen wizard for all your green screening needs from standalone software to plugins to the green screens themselves Ken is the man you want to go to. Longtime photographer and programmer, Ken has pulled both of his talents together to create the easiest green screen processes. And one and one hosting services. Do you need a personal website or do you have a business looking for a company with dependability and support, yet at a reasonable cost not to break the bank? One and one does it all. Websites domain names, email services, and even remote servers. To order any of these products, go to my website, jackstechcorner.com, and click on the graphics on the left Hello, how are side you? of the page. Oh, fine. Now, back um, to I was wondering about when you've got a subject that you take out and you're going to put into another picture. I did the subject, and then I took it out, and it was choppy around the edges. Okay, so it's a, you're cutting somebody out of another picture? Right. Okay. 
And what's your first name? I'm sorry. Vicky. Vicky. Okay. I just want to uh, let everybody know there you are being broadcast right now. So, uh, Vicky, I, I understand your question. So you're chopping somebody out or you're removing somebody or extracting somebody from a background. And, uh -huh. okay, and you're actually, once you do that part of it, uh, it's a little choppier on the edges. What I normally would do is, and I don't have anything up here. Let me see if I have uh, my picture here. Let me bring this back up on the screen. What I normally would do, it's very simple, is to, over on the toolbar, there is a blur tool. Now, what I use to get rid of that choppiness when you're putting it on another picture is I'll click the blur tool. And just very easily, I'll start blurring around the edges. Just left clicking your mouse and just moving up and down. What that's going to do is start, I call it the blending effect also. And if you look back uh, on my YouTube videos, there's actually one in there that, that's called the blending effect. Does that help you at all? Yes, I think it does. I had looked at that once before. But I must have had it turned up too much because it blurred way too much. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, you can. You may have it turned up just a little bit too much. So the strength at the very top, you can just move that strength uh, slider back or click the little pull down here at the top and um, just move the slider back a little bit and um, then try it. And, yeah, you, you may have to try it a couple different times to get the effect that you're going to really like. Okay. Okay, but is this your first week watching the show? Uh, no, I've seen them all. Oh, great. Good times. I'm glad you join in with us each week, yeah. Vicki. Okay, well, have a good day and uh, enjoy the rest of the uh, half hour here. Or the okay, thank you much. All right. Now. All right, bye bye. Okay, very good. That was Vicki, and Vicki was calling in just basically. Uh, Talking, as you guys heard about the around the uh, outside edges when you're extracting somebody and putting them in somewhere else, sometimes the edges can look a little edgy, right? A little choppy. So that's what Vicky wanted to know about. And I think we can clear that up just by using the blur tool. So I'm glad you called in. Thank you very much. Uh, if anybody else would like to call in, let me uh, bring this up here. The phone lines are open. And um, we're free and open here to take any calls from you. Um, or if you have a question, just throw it up in the chat window. I can also catch it there. Before we start moving on to this next segment that I hope you enjoy, and I hope it works out as well as, well as my tests worked out, I think you'll be pretty impressed. Uh, do you get paid? Uh, no, I don't. I don't get paid from anybody. Um, that's why at that advertisement you've seen that I do take uh, donations on jackstechcorner.com. Uh, no, I don't get paid for this at all. Um, a lot of people said you should call Adobe and maybe they should pay you. I even actually buy the, buy the software. Every time Adobe Elements comes out with a new version, I actually go out and I buy it too, just like you guys do. So I don't get any of that for free. Um, my basically basically what I enjoy doing is being able to teach this. I you know I've been doing it on YouTube for years now, and I found Justin TV and I thought, wow, man, there's an interesting way to teach people to bring people together and we can talk about Photoshop and editing and photography and edit pictures i think it's great so um but thanks that was a good question but no 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 payments whatsoever do i get uh from justin tv or from any of this uh, adobe stuff so okay so hopefully my equipment will hold up the new equipment here and you probably see um right there by my headphones underneath my collar i got a new uh wireless lapel microphone and uh, we're going to be trying to put that into the show today and see how this works um, naturally this microphone that I'm talking to you right now is, is a lot better than it is but um, we are going to uh, use that because we're going to do a, uh, a test here with you guys so it's going to be quite kind of interesting so let me go ahead and bring up my web browser if I can find it here and there we go there's the web browser and again, remember, this is just equipment that I've found over the years that I've enjoyed playing with. Um, again, they are not part of the show. They're not an affiliate of the show. I don't make anything if you folks buy this stuff or not. Will there be Stiller football this year? I hope and pray that there will be football in general. 
Um, broadcasters can't pick individual teams because we broadcast you guys all over the world in the states. So that would be <laughs> great. So, all right, we will be all very grateful. That's good. So we are gonna get started here. All right. So what we're going to talk about is this piece of equipment right here called iFi. Now, I don't know if you guys ever heard of it or ever seen it, but what it allows you to do is take pictures with your SD card camera. Now, remember, this is only SD, the smaller memory cards in your cameras, which is pretty much normal nowadays, and allows you to take them photos and transfer them wirelessly through the uh, Internet or any wireless connection to any photo sharing site you want to use and that's what makes it very very nice so I'm going to show you a short video on it and hold up here stop that I will show you the short video on it here and then I'm going to show you a demonstration here that I set up that I think should work out pretty good let's bring this up okay let's take me off the screen Wish your photos could just fly off your camera and automatically get organized on your computer? Use the iFi Connect X2 memory card. It does all the work for you. The iFi memory card replaces your existing memory card. After a simple setup, just insert it in your camera. It stores photos and videos just like the memory card you already have. The difference is, when you get back home and turn your camera on, the iFi card does all the work for you. The iFi card simply uses your wireless network to automatically send photos where you want them. It's easy. Your photos and videos can fly to your computer already organized. And if you like to share online, the iFi memory card can also automatically send your photos to your favorite sharing site. There's 25 to choose from. With the iFi card, you'll never have to worry about running out of space. The iFi card can automatically make space when content has been safely transferred. It's like having an endless memory card. The iFi card works with most cameras, including Canon, Nikon, Panasonic, Casio, and more. No more cables. Just turn your camera on and let your iFi Connect X2 do the rest. Okay, very good. So that is the iFi card, and that is how it works. It's just a very, it's wireless. Wireless, it sets up very, very easy with your computer at home. And what I'm hoping to do here in this test is get rid of these pictures. They keep coming back from the actual uh, sites out there that I put them on. And if you're a friend of mine on Flickr, you'll be able to watch this on Flickr also. And what we're going to do is I am going to actually take myself right now and go outside. So I'm going to go outside, but I'm still going to talk to you guys. And you're going to watch on the computer here. I'm going to take a couple, three, three or four pictures outside as I'm talking to you. And you'll watch them be posted onto my computer. And if you're friends of mine on Flickr, um, if we're uh, together on Flickr as a contact, then you'll also see them going up on the Flickr site as well. So this should be a very, very interesting test to see how this works. So let's go ahead and I'm going to uh, actually uh, push this mic down a little bit. Um. Turn, this one on. Turn this one on here just to see. Uh, yep, still getting audio. That's good. So we do have that on right now and uh, turn that back a little bit. You're probably hearing a little bit of my uh, air conditioning noise there right now. So. And how many gigs are they? The one that I have right now is a 4 gigabyte card. And the other ones, uh, I think they sell them up to 8 gig. Um, but what's nicer is that they automatically change and make the memory for you though. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so what we're going to try here is we're going to try this. Let me bring up my uh, computer here. Um, again, I'm going to select a new region, so bear, bear with me. Bear with me here. We're going to uh, select a new region. And what you're going to look for here is when I'm gone and talking to you, we're going to see these pictures 
uh, up here we're gonna see pictures come up these are coming back I've deleted these but what happens is with the iFi card that I found already is once you take a picture and it gets uploaded to Flickr or wherever mine's going to Flickr yours can go anywhere as you've seen on the video you they go just about anywhere if you delete them out of here it pulls them back from those sharing sites so that's what you're seeing that from so I'm going to go ahead and take some shots and uh, we'll see if this works out so hang in there with me guys and um, I'm not leaving you I'll just be continuously talking as I go outside I'm just grabbing my camera now and uh, I'll leave the lens cover here and we'll see how this works so again you won't have any video from me there won't be any video of me but there will be um, then there is uh, should be audio so if you're not getting audio don't don't get scared I mean I'm here okay I'm actually walking outside and uh, we will try to get some pictures here outside through the iFi and we'll see if this will work uh, let's just take a nice test shot here of a leaf okay that's just a test shot of a leaf there so if this works it should be coming up and you guys should see it you should be seeing it there pretty soon Uh, we'll try to take a picture of a flower here. And again, I'm just grabbing some shots here outside of my house. Uh, so my wireless is picking up outside. You have to be within the range of your wireless. Um, if you're not, don't worry too much about it. Uh, because what's going to happen is, if you're not, when you bring that camera back into the uh, place... You know, when you bring that camera back into your wireless network, the pictures automatically go onto the computer. Okay, so there we have three shots, and we're going to see how that goes. Hopefully the audio stayed with us, all right. Get one more here. Just grab one more. Now here is a trick to actually, here's a trick to actually allowing your pictures to go up to the computer, to get uploaded to the computer and to your sharing site. You have to leave the camera turned on. So the camera does have to be turned on uh, for this to work properly. So leave your camera on until you see all the pictures are properly uploaded to your uh, sites. And I see that sometimes they don't seem to want to come up right away. Sometimes you actually have to go back to, oh, there they are. They're starting to come up now. You can see them. Sometimes I bring them back up like this. You can see there's the leaves that I actually took outside. So that's the first shot. And... And as I said, that the little bars on the bottom, those are actually getting uploaded to uh, Flickr at the same time. So that's pretty neat. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me outside. I am back in the studio. Uh, you should hear now. As I switch over back to the other microphone. Get this back up here. We're going to... Uh, Bring this one back up, and we're going to shut that wireless microphone off. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Uh, hopefully you can uh, hear me again. I'm back on the uh, other mic here, so let's see. Let's cut that volume down. Yeah, the audio is looking good, so that is pretty neat, pretty interesting how that works. Um, they are getting uploaded, and like I said, if you're uh, friends of mine on Flickr, let me see if I can bring the Flickr site up also at the same time. And uh, see if anything's going up here. No, not yet. They're still uploading. But that makes sense, too, because right now I'm actually you know, I'm streaming also. So I'm broadcasting out, probably using up about all of my bandwidth that I have, or internet speed. So it takes these things a little bit longer to get uploaded. 
And, you know, that's just the way it works out. I mean, it's going to take a little bit more time to get uploaded to you, so. So they are coming right now. They're coming up here to you, and you'll be able to see those surely. But anyway, I wanted to introduce you to that. The um, setup here, if I go through the setup real quick. Let's just change the screen region, just so you see how this is set up. And using their site is absolutely free, uh, as far as uh, your, your photos going up. Um, there you go. So what we had to do here was, on the computer itself, you set it up where do you want the pictures to go on your computer. And where do you set, you know, so I just set a folder up. You can also set with Lightroom or Aperture. Um, you wouldn't have to tether your camera to your PC like weddings. No, you don't, Kevin. You're right. You do not. Uh, here's the trick at a wedding. Um, if I know on the Macs, and I'm not sure on PCs, a lot of them, but I know on the Macs, you can set your um, MacBook Pro laptop up to act as a wireless uh, device also. Okay, here's a question too from B.W. Woods. Um, this will only send a pic to where you set it up. <clears throat> will your neighbor's wireless pick this up? No, you're right. You're only going to set it up, and here you go. If you look at this second screen here, um, no, it's on. No, under networks. I'm sorry. No, and it does not slow down your read write speed at all. Um, I found it to be um, not as fast as plugging your camera in. I would rather plug my camera in directly, um, especially if you're shooting full uh, full megapixel 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 pictures, um, because it takes a little bit longer through wireless than it would be wired. But uh, it's an interesting concept. Think about this: you go to the zoo, you take your kids to the zoo. You come home, you're cooking dinner, you're trying to get the kids settled down, you know, after the day's trip, and they're, they're we're out there, they're hyper. You don't have time to run to the computer to transfer your pictures. Simply turn your camera on and sit on top of your refrigerator and walk away. And what's going to happen is they're wirelessly going to be transferred over to your, um, they're going to be transferred over to your computer. Um, now, Here's a downside to this. I know a lot of you guys, you're watching this show. Obviously, you're editors, right? You like to edit your pictures. <coughs> so what happens is, I don't like my stuff getting sent directly to Flickr all the time. I did this just as a demo. Ordinarily, I do not do this. And the reason I don't do it is because, um, there we go. Because I don't normally do this because the um, I like to edit my pictures, right? You want to be able to edit your pictures out and make them look nice before you upload them. So do you want your stuff going automatically to Flickr or do any of your sharing sites? I don't know. I mean, it's kind of cool. It's, it's interesting. This does work. You, you know, so if you have your networks here and you have your laptop somewhere, you can pick up public hosts also or public hotspots. So all you need is a key. The wireless key card, the hotspot access key, and you can add that and you can go off into the uh, other network. So, in other words, if you take pictures and walk into a McDonald's or any place around your house that has free Wi Fi, um, it can actually be set up so the card will just send those pictures right out. So, it's pretty neat and uh, it works out pretty well. So, with that said, um, hopefully, that's about everything I can think of with that. Uh, yep. It says it does do videos also. I haven't tried it yet. Maybe I'll have to work with that a little bit to see how it does videos. And um, how the videos would be sent. And I guess I could try that on Flickr. Uh, and I don't know. The other thing I didn't test, if you guys want to try this out, or maybe I'll try it out, is to put this card in my camcorder. Uh, into my handy cam there and see what happens there and see how that works out for us too. Uh, just out of curiosity, basically, you know, to see how it's going to work out. So I don't know what's going to happen there. But uh, anyway, so that is all of that. Pictures are still coming through. I took some other ones outside, too, and I don't know why. Like I said, it must just be because of the upload speed right now, and I'm just killing my wireless bandwidth. 
So I'm sure that could be it. Um, but other than that, that's about it. So, folks, this is a, a good opportunity if you want to uh, call in. I'll give you one more opportunity to call in here to us. And I'll give you this number one more time. 724-701-0911. 724-701-0911 if you want to call in. Uh, other than that, we are uh, getting ready to wrap this week up with uh, show number 11. And... Why does it always seem to be that this show never seems to be right with me? I don't understand that. As far as on what shows we're on, but it should be show number 11 this week. And uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the show. Hopefully my audio held up. Uh, you guys didn't say anything negative about being outside that we lost audio. So I'm going to have to think that we probably maintained the audio and everything held up there for us. Uh, you're not sure you see the value. Um, I guess the value is basically for the, the iFi cards, um, is just a, oh, how can you say that? A convenience, I guess. Um, just to have it in case, maybe you're out like a couple years ago, well, five years ago now, um, we took a, we went on a cruise ship and on the cruise ship, they have wireless internet services, but, um. You can actually take pictures and have them automatically uploaded. And because I was uploading pictures every night anyway back to my daughter so she can actually see where we were and what we were doing. So, And it might be good for, yeah, you're right, Kevin. Somebody likes to point and shoot. Um, I think that's a good point. Uh, somebody, you know, <laughs> good point, sorry. Somebody likes to point and shoot. But, uh, but you have a good point there. Or you're at a birthday party and you're snapping pictures. Uh, Grandma's sitting at home. She couldn't make it because the weather was too bad. Maybe she can see pictures popping up on your Flickr when the party's going on of the uh, two or three year old. So that's pretty neat. And I'm breaking up right now. All right, I think that's because I'm trying to upload these pictures. Hold on, let me kill this thing. And then the feed should actually be uh, coming back up there pretty good. And uh, we should be all right there. So hopefully that uh, took care of it. Like I said, my internet speed here is not the. Uh, best upload speed in the world so i can't do a whole lot of stuff at one time but i wanted to show you that how that works so okay guys and i'm going to break it off here now anyway and uh, i appreciate everybody stopping in here this week for photoshop elements weekly i'm glad you uh stopped by and i uh, hope you enjoyed the show and i hope you stop back next week and make it a point to stop back each and every week if you're not following the show please sign up for a free account on justin tv and then click on the little follow button. And we can uh, definitely make it uh, make it worth your while to stop back each and every week. If you have any ideas for the show, drop me a line. I'd love to hear about them. And uh, we'll be able to get those on also. Um, and don't forget, like I said, there is no, um, no payments that I receive for the show. So if you care to, stop over and drop something in the donation bucket at jackstechcorner.com. So until next week, as always, folks, keep those shutters clicking. Keep the editors editing. And I will see you back here next Sunday on Jack's Tech Corner with Photoshop Elements Weekly. So long for now, and take care.